हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ग्रामा क्लास टूडेज टॉपिक इज सिंथेसिस ऑफ सेंटेंसेज द वर्ड सिंथेसिस मीन्स कॉम्बिनेशन इट मीन्स कंबाइनिंग और ज्वाइनिंग सो इन इंग्लिश ग्रामा सिंथेसिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ कंबाइनिंग और ज्वाइनिंग टू ओ मो सिंपल सेंटेंसेज टू फॉर्म अ न्यू सेंटेंस विच मे बी आइदर अ सिंपल सेंटेंस ओ अ कॉम्पाउंड सेंटेंस or a complex sentence before i proceed any further let me remind you that a simple sentence is one that has only one finite verb for example in the sentence you are learning english our learning is the only finite verb hence it's a simple sentence similarly in the sentence he wants to learn english wants is the only finite verb to learn is an infinitive which is a non finite verb hence this is also a simple sentence in today's video i am going to explain how we can combine two or more simple sentences into a new simple sentence in the first segment we have the synthesis of simple sentences whose subjects refer to the same person place or thing number 1 we may join two or more simple sentences by using a present or perfect participle For example he took his breakfast and he went to school are the two separate simple sentences here here the first simple sentence he took his breakfast is changed into a participle phrase because it has the initial or earlier action took taking his breakfast he went to school the present participle taking has come in place of took If a simple sentence has any form of verb be like am is are was were etc we use the present participle of verb be being he was hungry and he sat down to eat are the two separate simple sentences here being hungry he sat down to eat i completed my work and i went out to play are the two simple sentences here In this example completed is the earlier action. So we are changing it into a perfect participle. Having completed my work I went out to play. Here we can also use the present participle. Completing my work I went out to play. Well we can also combine two or more separate simple sentences into a new simple sentence without changing the meaning by using an infinitive. For example I shall go to the bank and I will withdraw money are the two simple sentences here here we notice that the second sentence shows a purpose so this will be changed into an infinitive phrase I shall go to the bank to withdraw money to withdraw is the infinitive used here to combine these two simple sentences similarly he has three children he has to educate them are two separate simple sentences now since both these sentences have the same subject he we can join them by using an infinitive in place of the second sentence why the second sentence because it shows a purpose he has three children to educate in the last example we have three simple sentences you have a servant he cooks your food he cleans your house The second and third sentences indicate your purposes of having a servant. So we may join these three separate simple sentences by using two infinitives in place of the second and the third sentences. You have a servant to cook your food and clean your house. And then we may also use the structures of adverbs to and enough with an infinitive to combine two simple sentences and form a new simple sentence for example he is very weak and he cannot stand are the two simple sentences here we can combine these two simple sentences by using the structure of adverb to plus adjective plus infinitive here the infinitive is used in place of the sentence that shows the result or consequence he is too weak to stand and then they are very rich they can buy a villa the second sentence shows the consequence or result so it will be changed into an infinitive here the structure of adjective plus enough plus infinitive is being used here 
द न्यू सिंपल सेंटेंस इज दे आर रिच इनफ टू बाई अ विल अनादर इम्पोर्टेंट वे टू कम्बाइन टू सेपरेट सिंपल सेंटेंसेज इन टू अ न्यू सिंपल सेंटेंस इज बाई यूजिंग अ प्रपोजिशन विद अ नाउन और अ जेरान ही बेग्स फ्रॉम डोर टू डोर एंड ही अर्नस हिज लिविंग आर द टू सिंपल सेंटेंसेज है द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस शोज हिज मैनर ऑफ अर्निंग हिज लिविंग so this sentence will be changed to a preposition and gerund here he earns his living by begging from door to door the businessman died cancer caused his death in this sentence the second sentence shows the cause or reason hence in synthesis we will replace this second sentence with a preposition and noun the businessman died of cancer next we have the two separate simple sentences she heard the news and she fainted the first sentence shows the cause hence it will be substituted by a preposition and gerund she fainted on hearing the shocking news besides by using an adverb or adverbial phrase also we may combine two separate simple sentences into a new simple sentence he was dismissed from service his dismissal was unjust are the two separate simple sentences here Here we are using the adverb unjustly in place of the second simple sentence to form a new simple sentence. He was unjustly dismissed from service. It was raining. The rain was heavy. The second sentence describes the action of the first sentence here. So the adverb heavily will be used in place of the second sentence to form a new simple sentence. It was raining heavily. and in the last example we have the two simple sentences bob cut down the tree and he used an axe to do so and again the second sentence indicates the means or instrument of the action in the first sentence so we can use the adverbial phrase with an axe in place of the second sentence to combine these two sentences bob cut down the tree with an axe up next we are going to study the use of and a positive noun or noun phrase in synthesis of sentences and a positive noun or noun phrase also known as a noun in apposition is one that is placed right next to another noun in the sentence to describe or rename the former for example shakespeare died in 1616 he was the greatest dramatist are the two separate simple sentences here The second sentence describes the noun in the first sentence so we replace it with a noun in apposition the greatest dramatist Shakespeare the greatest dramatist died in 1616 meet john he is my best friend in place of the second sentence we are using the noun phrase in apposition my best friend here meet john my best friend in the last example the second and the third sentences have the descriptions of the noun gandhi So these two sentences will be converted to noun phrases in apposition. Gandhi, a lover of peace and once a lawyer, preached non-violence. But how will you combine two separate simple sentences whose subjects refer to different persons, places or things? You see if the separate simple sentences have different subjects but a common verb or the same verb in them we may join them by using and in the first example the separate simple sentences have different subjects tom and bob but the same verb likes so we are joining the two subjects using and in the new simple sentence tom and bob like to swim such a subject in a simple sentence is known as a compound subject similarly the separate sentences tobacco is harmful and alcohol is harmful are combined as tobacco and alcohol are harmful but when two or more separate simple sentences have different subjects and different verbs also and if they have a cause and effect relation of interdependence we combine them by using a nominative absolute or an absolute phrase which is a group of words with its subject but without a finite verb and remember in synthesis we use the nominative absolute or the absolute phrase in place of the sentence which shows the cause or the earlier action 
Here in the first example, we have the two separate simple sentences. The day was very hot and people stayed indoors. Here the first sentence shows the cause, so it will be converted to a nominative absolute while no change to the second sentence showing the effect. The day being very hot, people stayed indoors. The day being very hot is the nominative absolute here. The sun rose, the fog disappeared. The first sentence, the sun rose, shows the reason or cause, so it will be changed to a nominative absolute. The sun having risen, the fog disappeared. As you can see, a nominative absolute has its own subject but no finite verb. It has either a present participle or a perfect participle. The leader was killed. People were mournful are the two simple sentences in passive voice. The first sentence indicates the cause. So by changing it to a nominative absolute, we have the leader having been killed. People were mournful. Well, let's study some more examples now. I saw an eagle. It was flying high in the sky are the two separate simple sentences to be combined here. By using a present participle for the second sentence, we have I saw an eagle flying high in the sky. However, it will be wrong if the participle phrase flying high in the sky is placed before the subject I. In that case, it will describe the subject I and not the eagle. His mother was very ill. He could not go to school. Here we have two simple sentences with different subjects and different verbs. So we are using a nominative absolute for the first sentence of cause. His mother being seriously ill, he could not go to school. In the third example, the noun phrase a Nobel laureate describes the subject of the first sentence to go. So we are using a noun phrase in apposition to combine these sentences. To go, a Nobel laureate was born in 1861. And in the next example, we are using the structure of adverb to and infinitive to join the two simple sentences. John is too old to drive a car. He has failed many times. He still hopes to succeed are two separate simple sentences expressing a sense of contrast. So we are combining them by using the prepositional phrase in spite of and Gerard failing. In spite of failing many times, he still hopes to succeed. Next to the two simple sentences, it was a holiday and they decided to go trekking, have different subjects and different verbs. So the first sentence is converted to a nominative absolute and we have it being a holiday, they decided to go trekking. But mind you, we can't say being a holiday, it's wrong because the nominative absolute must have its own separate subject it here. The king won the battle, he returned to his kingdom. Since the first sentence shows the earlier activity here, we can replace it with the preposition after and Gerard winning. After winning the battle, the king returned to his kingdom. So that's the end of today's class. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel for more grammar videos. Thank you.